I love that. We are live. Yes. Hey, everybody. How's it going today? It has been a day. It's, what's the weather like in New York? Oh, it's actually, you know, we're upstate, but it was a beautiful day. It was humid and hot, but beautiful. That's why I just went swimming. Uh, it's really nice. I'm actually, we need some rain. You need we some rain. We haven't had any rain for like a week. Oh, gosh. Mm. Wow. But uh, it's fun. But yeah, the plants yeah. need to care and <laughs> yeah, I have some geraniums out out front that are like help. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm just waiting for people to come into the room as they say. Oh, how, I don't know how this works. Is that what happens? Yeah. If you if you have your Facebook on. Yeah. Oh, so I see on the right. Yeah. People entering. Yeah. So, so let me turn it turn this down. People are coming in. Do you have a pool? No, I have a lake. I live on a lake. It's the backyard. <laughs> do, you, do you want to see a picture of it? Yes, yeah, show us a picture. All right, wait, wait a sec. Uh, hold on. All right, so wait. This is the view from my deck. Can you see it? Wait. Uh -oh. Yes. Oh. That's so like, we I just walk out the backyard and swim. Oh um, my gosh. Get, let me find a better picture, but that that's basically my lake. I am jealous. You know, I'm, I'm grateful. That's all I could say. I'm just grateful because it changes everything. Riding here, hmm. um, like this the other morning, it was, this was the um, sunrise, wait. Oh my god! I can't like. Where's the camera? <laughs> Apple. All right. So you oh, see that? It's very pretty. That's beautiful. So inspiring. It's easy. It must be easy to create up there. Well, I hope it is because I'm going to be here a long time creating. Listen. <laughs> oh, there's Andrea Jones. Yes, she's one of my best friends. I love her. <laughs> what a fantastic singer, musician. Oh, she's great. Everything. I've known Andrea since I was twenty. 20 years old. Oh, really? Yeah. We go way back. Kiki. <laughs> yes. And Kenny and Kenny Overton is in here. Oh, and wait, Abe Hunter is asking me, Abe, there aren't weeds in it. And it's not a sandy bottom. I mean, it's sandy bottom where I am. But, oh, Andy. But, yes. And Kenneth. <laughs> but um, if you go out further, it gets, you know, gushy a little bit, but I don't care. It's, it's a, there's no boats allowed on it, so it's completely clean, clear lake. It's perfect. Oh, any fish yeah. here? Yeah, there's fish, but yeah. you know, nothing to write home about. I mean, people fish in it, but I don't like to eat the fish from the lake I'm swimming in. I understand. Because I pee in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kirsten. Yes. <laughs> hey, guys. Brad, Brad Kennard, oh, my friends, all my friends, all of our friends. Uh huh. Nice yeah. to see people. Yes, it is. It'll be a while before we get to hug each other. So that's for sure. Yeah, it's always nice. So they're the first person that I've interviewed mm -hmm. that, that I only know through their music or through their career. You know, in a way, singing their music. So this is this is. New for me to interview somebody yeah. who I don't know, but I yeah, know it's cool. We never met. No, now we're friends now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So talk. I want to know. I want to know all about about Ricky Ian Gordon. I don't, I don't know where you where you're from and how you got into music. Okay, I'm from the South Shore of Long Island, a little town called Island Park. Yes. Jasmine and Kim hey, Jones. Jess. Um, so I so I grew up in this little town, Island Park. It's the town before Long Beach, if you've ever gone to Long Beach. And uh it was we I lived on a little island called Harbor Isle, and I grew up on the water. Most of my life was at this boat yard. And uh so I'm definitely a water person. I like to be by the water. And uh when I was five, I started playing the piano. I had three older sisters. Um 
there's a good, do you know, there's a good sort of juicy book about my family that's sidelined. It's called Home Fires. Home and Fires. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good book. And it's actually, it just came out a couple, when I was at um, St. Louis doing 27, it came out as an audible book as well. And then I'm at the end. I, I, I say the coda. I wrote the coda. Uh -huh. it, anyway, so my three older sisters, I was the baby. And at five, I started playing the piano. And um, really what happened was um, I... I was obsessed. I was a geek. I was obsessed with music. I mean, I, I was obsessed with everything like Joni Mitchell, mm -hmm. you know, like I had, um, I have a great letter from Joni Mitchell of my piano that she wrote me in 1970. What? 1970? <laughs> what does it say? I had sent her. Okay. So my sister, Susan was a writer. She was a journalist and mm -hmm. she was the first journalist to write about Joni Mitchell. And she she called me up. She lived in San Francisco. She said, you have to hear this woman's songs. You'll love them. And I became obsessed with them. My sister gave me Joni Mitchell's address. So I started sending her like gifts. Mm -hmm. I, like at one point I bought her a record and it was a record of, it was an astrology reading for Scorpios. <laughs> A record of astrology. It was, it was, an, it was her, an astrology reading for Joni Mitchell. I bought it in the village. And I, um, I had, at one point, she was going to be at Carnegie Hall, and I, I had my friend Denise make a dress, right? And I used to embroider, mm -hmm. and I embroidered it from head to toe with, like, butterflies and sunsets and flowers. And I gave it to her. I was sitting in the front row center, and I said, Joni, it's Ricky. She was tuning her dulcimer. And she goes, Ricky Gordon, my old pen pal. And I gave her this package and never heard from her again. But anyway, she wrote me this great letter, and she said, she couldn't play the record because she was on her way, because thieves ripped off her record player. And she was on her way to sing on a friend's record in LA. And the record she was gonna sing on was Tapestry, Carol King's uh -huh. record. Wow. Anyway, so, but I started playing the piano pretty young and I was just obsessed with all kinds of music. It's funny, cause I just the other night, um watched the movie. Kevin had never seen the movie of West Side Story. Yeah. And I haven't seen it since I was 1961, because right. I was five. I was born in 1956. Okay. So I was so, I couldn't even believe how great that movie was. And it just, I was sort of reawakened how great Bernstein was, mm -hmm. but I liked everybody. Bernstein, Berg, Britain, a lot of bees. A lot um, of bees. <laughs> I like Kurt, you know, Kurt Vile. I liked all those people who, sort of towed the line between mm -hmm. theater and and then what happened was I, I went to high school and I didn't what's Carnegie Hall? What's Abe saying? Abe. Oh. He says Abe. every every uh convos, what's Carnegie Hall? Abe. Oh oh my god. Oh. Anyway, so um I um I went to Carnegie Mellon I got in while I was still in high school, right? Mm -hmm. I went and I got in as a pianist in Pittsburgh. While I was there, um, I had this revelation in my first year when I was there that the reason I played the piano was not because I wanted to like perfect, you know, a Chopin nocturne, mm -hmm. but because I my whole life was exploring the um, ideas of composers whose work I loved. Mm -hmm. You know, like I would, by the music of every composer I love, like Messiaen and Britton and Berg and, you know, Bartok and Kurt Weill. And, and um, so I thought maybe, maybe I'm a composer. From, and, um, from I was like, maybe I'm a composer. I mean, you know, I was on <laughs> drugs and drinking and having sex. So I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I went to the com composition department and said, what do I have to do to be in the composition department? Of course they said, write music. Uh -huh. um, so I went home. There was like a vacation. I went home and wrote a ton of music. It was like I walked into my own life. And actually, the way I started writing music was, you know, I loved people like Ned Rorm. I loved all the composers, Poulenc, all the composers who set poems to music because yeah. poetry was like my first love. Right. You can tell by the by the ones you choose. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I love poems. Yes, I could tell. I can tell. 
we have to talk about something at one point on this show too, but I'll, I'll that's later. Oh my God, there's Brianna. <laughs> hey, Brianna, I was just talking about you today. I was interviewed for Michigan Opera Theater. I was talking about how great Brianna was in oh, 27. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't... She's, she was Gertrude Stein, 27. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I've, I've worked with all these kids. Oh, that's why they're on here. <laughs> hey, Damien, do you know Damien Jeter? He's a composer. Barrett, no. Baritone, fantastic. Have we? I don't think so. Yeah, but... and, and, and Julia Bullock's mom, Alice, is on here. Oh, oh my God. I've worked with Julia. Yeah. We, and Julia and I did something at the um, Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yes. Oh, the yeah. The Langston News Evening. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was on the show on Thursday, last Thursday. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice to see everybody. Yeah, seeing their I little monikers. Yeah. I love you too, Brianna. Um, anyway, so then I became a composer and I started setting all the poems I love to music. Mm -hmm. And I came to New York and um, thought that I was going to, you know, like tear this town apart. Mm -hmm. And then bottomed out on speed and alcohol. And at 33, I got sober and my whole life started. <laughs> That's really, that is what happened. That's what <laughs> that happened? The truth. Well, yes. that was the blessing um, you made it. That, yeah. So I'm, and, uh, and it's amazing because as soon as I decided I have to stop doing this, mm -hmm. everything happened. And I mean everything. Like I got a publishing contract, a recording contract. That is actually when, well... I got sober in 1989 and like soon after that, I wrote that Dreamy's Child for Harlan mm -hmm. and Harlan recorded it and, and and that sort of put me on the map and then just a lot of stuff happened at once, but mm -hmm. it was the right thing to do. It was the right to, thing to, to get do. off the drugs. That's, that was the right to, thing. You know, to, <laughs> you know, steer. You know what? You know, there's this movie Barfly and... Um, Faye Dunaway stars in it, and she's an alcoholic in the movie. She has this one line, and she goes, she, look, I drink. And when I drink, I move in the wrong direction. And that was sort of me. <laughs> <laughs> but thank but God, I, thank I'm, I'm, you. Like, <laughs> I'm as clean as the new mown hay now. I know that's right. I know that's right. Drink, I drink a little bit, but everything I see you with your wine. I yes, see you tippling over there, Karen. Oh. I Listen, have like I cranberry have juice. <laughs> I'm not. I don't have to sing sing as much, so I can have a little fun, you know. Yeah. No. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, there's Ticia. Ticia. Oh, this is Donna Alan Fiddleman. It's so nice to see everybody. Yeah. Um, and John anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm glad people are showing up. Yes, these people are my are my family. You know, we all become family. It's so nice. Yeah. It's so nice. I was glad you asked me to do this. And you had, yeah, Jake was on a couple of weeks ago. Yes, I he him. was. He was. You know, it was, it, Kenny and I were, because Kenny's sort of like the secret producer. He's like a secret, you know, he, uh -huh. he, he thinks he invented this, but he did not. This is all me. But um, he was talking to me and I was like, you know, I want to do a composer series. And because I didn't know you, I was like so nervous to reach out to you. But he's like, no. He's like, call Ricky. Do email him. He'll love to do it. So, Oh, um, yeah. I, I'm so glad. And there's Eileen Perez. Yes, Eileen. Hi. We lo I love you, too. This is so cool. This is so cool. So we so like okay. So okay, you you go to you you go to right. school, piano. Keep talking. Keep talking. All right. I was like, all right. So I come to New York. I get sober and everything. And then I have to say, um, I just I then things started happening. Like there was this. Do you know who Adam Gettle is? Like he wrote, you know, Light in the Piazza. Yes. And, right. Well, this woman named Teresa McCarthy took Stephanie. It's, it's too Stop funny. It. She'll she'll be on very 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 soon. Just She's another did. one. Okay. So anyway, so Adam Gettle, someone took me to his loft, which I swear to God was like the size of a city block, to record some of my songs. And he and I had never met, and I didn't know who he was. I didn't know he was like Richard R Rogers' grandson. Mm -hmm. But ah, oh, Stephanie's so adorable. <laughs> so anyway, um, Adam heard my music that day. We recorded like six songs, right? Mm -hmm. And Adam said, um, listen, I'm about to um, present four composers in a concert for the gay men's health crisis because it was the height of AIDS. And um, he he could see like 500 people in his loft. 
And he said, would you want to be the one of the composers? I said, sure, that would be fun. I had no idea what I was getting into. And you know this, you know Patricia Schumann, the, who she's- Yes, you know, the mezzo, well, yes. Well, at the time she was, she had just become a soprano and she had learned, she was singing at the Met and she learned a cycle of mine. I wrote a cycle for her. She commissioned one of my first cycles. So we were rehearsing it all the time. So I said, Pat, will you come and do this with me? And Adam put me last that night. Mm -hmm. And Mary Rogers, his mother was there, and Sheldon Hornick, who wrote Fiddler mm -hmm. on the Roof. But there were hundreds of people there. And Mary said, like, you know, where have you been? Why don't we know about you? And anyway, there's Michael Priestley, Kathy yes. Olsen. So I... Um, I said, you know, I should have been under a rock for like, anyway, I couldn't tell them that at that moment where I had been. But I, about a week later, Mary had me over to her house to play. She literally had me play music for her for three hours on Richard Rogers' piano with all the original Rogers and Hammerstein set designs by Joe Melzina around the piano. I couldn't believe it. And, and then her husband, Henry, came home and she had me play it all over again. And like a week later, I had a publishing contract. And for about five years, they paid for me to live. Like they were just paid for me to live so I could write. Right. And um, which, you know, was so nice because I'm sure they expected me to write a big hit Broadway show. And, you know, I just wrote my weird music the whole time. <laughs> and um, but that that was a big beginning for me. And then, you know, just it started it all started happening. And. Then it, the big, a big breakthrough came. Well, you, you all know, like I had a lover named Jeffrey, my partner, mm -hmm. Jeffrey Grossi. He died in 1996. That was shattering. And my whole life exploded after oh, yeah. that. Like I was, you know, I only wrote about that for about five years. Five somewhere, years. That's a long yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote Green Sneakers and Orpheus mm -hmm. and Eurydice, everything, late afternoon. Mm -hmm. But um, then what happened was um, Minnesota Opera. Oh, I re I decided I really wanted to write operas. Okay, I really hadn't written an opera yet. Right. So one, this might have been, I swear, it might have been in cassette period, but I think it was a CD. I sent something to every opera company. It had 16 songs on it. Mm -hmm. And it had all my friends' recorded songs. Um, you know... Lauren Flanagan was on there, Angelina Rayo, Kurt Ullman, Angelina. and uh, yes. Carolyn. Mm -hmm. And I, and it was amazing. Like Houston Grand Opera commissioned me, and then um, Minnesota Opera decided they wanted me to write Grapes of Wrath. Mm. And things just took off, you know, because here's the thing like, if you're sober, <laughs> you got a lot of time on your hands. You know what <laughs> and right. I had to, like, and I was scared. I, I Especially with with uh, Grapes of Wrath, it was like to say yes to setting, you know, making this iconic book into an opera. And yes, it was a very scary thing to say yes to, but I did, and the rest is history. Kids. The rest is history. When you're sober, you can say yes to things like but, that. I, yeah. <laughs> so it was a, and uh, I bet ever since then, I've just been, you know, writing. You want to hear one weird thing, Karen? Oh, can, I, all right, can I give it to you honestly? Yes. All right. Somewhere in the early 90s, someone wanted me to go to, his name was Singh. Like, and he was an Indian astrologer that it took like a year to get an appointment with. And when you finally saw him, you had to go to a, it was a building on the east side. He worked in a bank all day. And then he did his reading, reading upstairs in a bank. Yeah. One of the first things he said to me was, ooh, a lot of your opportunity in life is going to come from people of color. And I said, really? Because it was already like starting to happen that everyone I worked with was black. He was like, <laughs> yeah. He said, yeah, you did something good in your last life. <laughs> so I think I was Abe Lincoln. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> listen to me. I grew up on 221 Lincoln Avenue. So... There you go. Uh, I was Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, what, you, you should never bet against black. Okay, <laughs> these companies are figuring that out. That's right, baby. Okay. <laughs> but, so it was amazing because then even things like 
you know, remember the whole when Audra McDonald sang my songs? Yes. That wasn't even, she heard Ireland CD and she was just starting to like come out. Like I had seen mm -hmm. that carousel and she said, I want to sing your songs. And then it just exploded. And then yeah. I wrote Only Heaven and then I said like 4 million Langston Hughes songs. Right. So, so why Langston Hughes? Why, like, why Langston Hughes? Because, <laughs> all right, here's the thing for one thing, mm -hmm. you know, Langston Hughes, he could say in four lines what some poets took 400 lines to say. He had an enormous economy and depth and profundity and knowingness. And it, he did it with the simplest of means. And he was obsessed with music. He traveled all over the world with a phonograph player and his records. He mm -hmm. could be in the desert with this little photograph phonograph player and his records, right? Mm -hmm. So he wrote his his um, poems are musical. You can't, and I would, Harold and Blackwell, I met her, I was writing, I wrote something for Carol Vaness. Mm -hmm. And Carol Vaness was at Glyndebourne doing Don Giovanni. And I went to work with her and Harold was there doing that Porgy and Bess, mm -hmm. that Trevor Nunn had directed. Yeah. Harlan and I met. She said, I want you to write something for me. And that's when I said, oh, okay. So I went back to New York and I sat down and the first thing I wrote was, you know that song, Kid in the Park? Lonely little question mark. Yeah. So that was the first one I wrote and then they all just sort of flew out of me. Like I could look at his poems on the paper and hear the music. Wow. And then I couldn't stop because you know, and even, by the way, in New York City, hanging, Stephanie, well, anyone who's been in my house knows this, hanging over the door of the room that I write in is the poem um, Luck, which just goes, sometimes a crumb falls from the tables of joy, sometimes a bone is flung, to some people love is given, to others only heaven. Mm. That so sings. that sings. Yeah, that it's a beautiful poem. Oh. So yeah, so that that was it. All started with Kit in the Park. There's Patrice P. Wow, the Kit in the Park is a favorite. It. Wow. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Anyway, so are you going to write just, more? Some more? Huh? You might in some more Langston? Well, here's the thing. I want to discuss something with you. Can we discuss something controversial on your show? The, this is where we do it. This is where we do it. All right. I want to tell you something that happened the other day. Okay. All right. But I have to just get something on my phone. Okay. Take your time. I'm just going to Let say me, that. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, can no, I tell go, you this? Go ahead, oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. This is the story. Do you know who Lucille Clifton is? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm reading her right now. All right. Well, you know, oh, wait, see, I have to concentrate for one second. Cause I'm interested in getting. All right. So let me tell you what happened. Uh -huh. So I love Lucille Clifton, okay? Another great African-American poet. Yes. And one of my songs that I do a lot is um, I, I set her blessing the boats to music, oh. right? But here's the thing, Karen. When this happened to George Floyd, mm -hmm. there's a poem. Oh, my God, Peter Ansman. He's my childhood Peter. friend, Amy Hutchinson, Kimberly Render. All right, so this is going to be heavy just for a second. Is okay, y'all ready? Okay. All right, so when the George Floyd thing happened, like everybody else, I have never seen anything like that. I completely freaked out. Mm -hmm. And there's been a poem of of um, Lucille Clifton that I felt like I have no right to set it to music and I will never be allowed. But all of a sudden, I was like, I need to set that poem to music. Mm -hmm. So I was talked to Kevin about it, and Kevin said, I think you should talk to Lynn. Call Lynn Nottage and tell her and tell her your conflict about it. And Lynn and I had this amazing conversation. And Lynn just said, yes, but said it from the, the standpoint that you are in conversation with that poem. It's not about appropriation. Just like I didn't appropriate Langston Hughes. Because let me just say this thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it baldly and right out there. Okay. I love black singers. I love black artists. If I have to be, if my mission in life is to give you guys great things to sing, then so be it. Do you know what I mean? 
And yes. but I if if every black composer in the world set likes to use, I just say let's give everybody more stuff to sing. Yeah. Anyway, so I want to share this poem with you. Mm -hmm. Can I share this poem? Please. Now Thank it you. is, you guys. This is this poem is rough. I read it to um Justin Austin yesterday, and he cried. Oh. All right. So it's called. I wonder. See, Jasmine says Clifton is iconic. I wonder if you guys know this poem. Oh, I love you, Keisha. You you guys are so great. Anyway, so this poem is called Jasper, Texas, nineteen ninety eight, for Jay Bird. Do you remember who Jay Bird was? Jay Bird was the guy who was dragged behind the truck. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna read this poem too, and this is gonna be one of my next songs. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Or mm -hmm. It goes, I am a man's head punched in the road. I was chosen to speak by the members of my body. The arm, as it pulled away, pointed toward me. The hand opened once and was gone. Why and why and why should I call a white man brother? Who is the human in this place? The thing that is dragged or the dragger? What does my daughter say? The sun is a blister overhead. If I were alive, I could not bear it. The townsfolk sing, we shall overcome, while hope bleeds slowly from my mouth into the dirt that covers us all. I am done with this dust. I am done. It's an amazing poem, right? That's and I mean, the truth is this, that I just want to say this. Not enough people read poetry. And sometimes I feel like if a, if a composer's job too, if I set that poem right, mm -hmm. okay, and can really make it live in a setting, more people will know that poem. Yes. Because that's what happens. Unfortunately, people, oh, Amy said Justin was amazing in Intimate Apparel. He's, he's fucking amazing. Yeah. But anyway, so the thing is, not enough people read poetry. I mean, whole civilizations born are born and die on the power of a single line of poetry, but not enough people read it. So if Brad Moore, oh my God. Anyway, so that's the thing. So I'm gonna set it to music. It's gonna take a while because it's not gonna be easy. Exactly. That but it's an amazing poem, right? It's, it's amazing. You know what I've been doing in my time? What? I've been poetry but bell look hooks. at you yes yes which I, ones who which poets do you have bell hooks uh, uh um this woman uh the book is called aphrodite's daughter it's about the poems from the harlem renaissance and oh Green yeah yeah, yeah. and all those um alice dunbar i'm reading her book right now um oh my gosh so oh this is my favorite this is pat parker she was a woman from the of oh, the wow. Her yeah, are unbelievable, unbelievable. So I just, I've just been reading because you know I have this time. Oh, these poems from um Rupi Kapoor, Kapoor, Milk and Honey. Oh, I had some Elizabeth Future just sent me her second book. She yes, Fancy. very beautiful, very simple writing. Yes, very simple, but very, yeah, ama amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So that's really what I've been doing is a lot of you know. Listen, there's one other poet, a new one that you should look up. Ooh, oh, yeah. Complete. Okay. Um, her name is Rachel Eliza Griffiths. Oh. She's another beautiful African American poet. She has a new book out uh, about the body. I think it's called About the Body. It's oh. She's amazing. She's in my writing group uh, every Friday. She's wow. Good. She's good. Anyway, that's, anyway. So that's, that's what's talking. been going on. Like that, I just. <sighs> Yeah, I, I just, um, and and the truth is, okay, this period in time, you know, just this like pandemic, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I came I came up here on March 12th when we were delayed, when we were postponed at Lincoln Center. And at first I rewrote Intimate Apparel just because 
it's very rare that you get to watch a show of yours for almost three weeks in front of an audience, eight yes. shows a week. Yeah. So it really, I felt like I really knew that show, and I was like, I know how to make this show even better. Like, and I was proud of it. But it's 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 better now. Did you change so, it? I just I tuned it up. Like for example, there were places where oh, I love Stephanie. You are so read about poetry. Mm -hmm. You need to recite aloud to understand the flow of language and music. Have to. Yes, you do. And I, yes. she knows. I memorize these poems and I speak them before I set them to music. You know, I um, love I love what? you when you sing your stuff. I listen to so many of your, of so many of your pieces of you singing them. I enjoy it. I'm like, okay, that's how it's supposed to go. <laughs> well, here's the thing. That's the only reason I did those recordings. Not because I'm a chanteuse and I wanted to tell the world what a great singer I was. <laughs> it was because I heard too many performances of people who didn't know how things went. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'm gonna show them, and I'm playing on those CDs too. So I just thought, at least now they'll know how these songs go. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I, I get it. I said, oh, okay. And now I know the line or the phrase or the, you know, I was coaching um, yeah. this, oh. in your, one of your pieces from some high school students. And it when I said, I said, you have to go to Ricky's and listen to how he does it because they were just singing the notes, but it, I had to teach them how to take, take time and give it back. Take, give and take, you know, I said, if you're going to take a little time, you got to give a little, you know, and just them finding where they could do those things. And like, I, I like, like straps, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, you just take as much rubato as you want. And if, if you are, what you're doing and what I'm doing is storytelling. Yeah. And I want you to tell the story mm -hmm. and I want you to do what you need to do to tell the story clearly and truthfully and movingly and you know let it breathe you know look at all these great people i here know today. thank you Asha, know. i love stephanie you love those recordings too that makes me happy we should yes. sing something right now um <laughs> do you do that do you make music on here no i haven't i haven't done that <laughs> oh my gosh we'll have to <laughs> that would be wild. Be fun. I don't know what it'd be like. I don't know what sound is like on this thing. No, I don't think it's good. We have to, we'll have to do a part two. We'll have to do a part right, two. We'll do a part two. Oh, can we but, do a concert? Uh, Let's do a concert. A mini con Why not? Okay. We Stay all tuned. got plenty of room, plenty this of summer. time. Oh, there's Jarrell. Uh, these guys are good. Yes. Irene, Jarrell. Um, he, yeah, he right? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. So keep talking. Keep talking. I love this. I love this. This is all what right. I do all the time. I just run my mouth and talk to my friends. <laughs> Can I so I'll tell you where I'm at right now is um and what I think about this period of time. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, like not to be all but of course I believe in God and I have yeah. a big prayer life. I, I spend a lot of time praying and meditating. Mm -hmm. And I think that this was a sort of God enforced pause in the world. God was like, y'all, you all are making a, too much of a mess and it's time to just stop everything. And, and it's sort of like everything's exploding, but it's gonna be a different world when it's, Jarrell said, give me that hat, but it's gonna be a different world when it's over. And right now the simple things like the way in New Delhi, the way they can see the gate for the first time in 30 years because the air has never been this clean. Mm. The way up here, I've never seen so many birds in the country. Uh, the, it's just like something's going on and the world is going to be better and Trump's going to be out of the White House and just I just feel like things are going to get better and it's just a really painful time. But this this is a um, – this and it's, so for me in this pause – I'm taking the time to say a lot of no's because I really need to think about what I'm going to do next and who I want to be in the world, in this new world. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to pretend it's business as usual. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. it ain't, <laughs> it ain't business as usual. And why pretend? Exactly. And so, you know, that's, that's where I am with this, with this time. Oh my God. It's like sunset. I wish y'all could see sunset oh. on the lake. 
So how will music change? Like, like, you know, of course we're going to, the venues are going to change and things are going to, you know, be so different, but I've been asking the composers, like the sound of the moment, the sound, you know, like the civil rights era, there was a sound of, of the movement. Like is the, you know, I wonder what we don't is. know. And that's the thing know. is sometimes you shouldn't trust things that are born in the midst of mayhem. Mm. Let this happen. Let this wash over you and let's see what, let's see where we are. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. just all breathe and get through this time mm -hmm. and use it and be, it's funny, you know, Missy Mazzoli? Yes. We had this great exchange because she is, she and Royce Vavrick have been living together during this time. One yeah. day Missy said to me, how I feel like I'm never going to get this time back, you know, because for a lot of us, I mean, Missy, Justin, a lot of people were just about to sort of make their mark. You yeah. know what I mean? Everybody was about to have all this work in the world. And then this happened. And I just said, Missy, you're not going to get this time back, but you need to live in this time because this is a profound time that, Many generations, like my father went through a world war. We haven't had a world war. We're having something now that's as big as a world war. It's a global moment. Everybody's in the same boat. Some are in it better than others. Some are poorer, some are richer. But everybody, everybody is susceptible to this killer virus. And mm -hmm. everyone, because of George Floyd, nobody could deny that something very wrong was happening in the world. And I'm sorry, there's a difference between seeing someone shot in the back mm. and seeing someone begging for their life and calling for their mother. That changed the playing fields, the yes. playing field. You know what I mean? And yep. so we are in, we're in a, a it's going to be a new paradigm and I don't know what the hell it's going to be. All I know is, for example, in terms of, that suddenly feeling like I have the balls to even ask, can I set that poem to music? And I don't even know what it's what it's going to be yet, but it's going to be something because I know that poem needs to live in yes. the world and be read by more than just the 12 people who read poetry, which I know more people than that read poetry, but it's, it's, it's terribly specialized for such an important art form. Absolutely. You know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about what you're saying because you know, everyone's like, oh, we, we, we'll need comedy after this is over, or we'll need, you know, something to make people happy. And I'm, you know, or, or just love, love stories, which I'm always for, especially black love stories. You know, you just never get to see. You're going to need intimate apparel. When this You're is gonna need, exactly, exactly. But then you think about, you know, the song of the time, you have to tell the story of the time. So not being afraid to, to, to take people back to those times and to get that real emotion. All right, so Karen, can I share one other thing with you? Keep, keep going. That's what we're here for. It's now. I wonder if Peter Andman's still on here because I called him about this. All right, I'm going to share one other thing with you. Go for yeah, it. If you want to, if, if you feel like it, if I bother you, close the door, okay? All right. So you should meet Kevin, but all right. So here's Tell the him thing. Come on, I want to meet he'll, him. They'll come say hello. Good. But I'm I'm going to share something with you, okay? Okay. All right. So you guys. When I grew up in this town of Island Park, okay, there was one black kid in the whole town, okay? And he came to an unfortunate end. And my whole life, I would say it haunted me. His name was Jerry Hammer. And I finally decided that I was gonna write about it. So for like about, a month and a half I worked on the lyric and now I just set it to music. And I want to tell you this one thing. Do you know Blythe Gasser? Yes, I Blythe, do. Mezzo? Mezzo soprano. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So Blythe wanted to commission a song from me about home. And I thought I can't just write like it has to be, I need to write something about home that is coming at it from a whole other angle. Mm -hmm. So can I read you this lyric? I can't, I won't play the music now, but I'd love to just share the lyric with you. You got okay? the floor, yeah. I got the floor. You got the floor. So, and, and Peter, I don't know if you remember Jerry Hammer, but 
so this is so this is a true story. You ready? Mm -hmm. And by the way, the bridge I'm referring to in the piece is the Long Beach Bridge that connects Island Park and Long Beach. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Jerry Hammer was a boy in my first class. People said where he lived, it was lower class. Houses crumbled, lawns were brick and broken glass. There was no grass. No one knew him. He was shunned by the whole school. Jeered at, he was outcast like the village fool. All agreed on as if code or hidden rule. He wasn't cool, so we were cruel. Winter, he went missing, and the grown-up said, walking on the bridge, he slipped and hit his head, fell into the water where the ice had spread. The slush turned red, and he was dead. Jerry's blackness mocked the whiteness of fresh snow. Is this story even true? We'll never know. No one cared to wager half a nickel on. He was just gone. How come Mrs. Casper never said his name, acting like he wasn't there, an unlit flame? Looking back, the only thing I feel is shame. But who is to blame? It's still the same way. Jerry Hammer, royal the ocean of green blue. If I could turn back the clock, here's what I'd do. Ask you home for milk and cookies, supper too. I'd sing for you. I'm sorry. Hmm. Jerry Hammer. Jerry Hammer. And like, what's that sound? So when you read these poems over and over again, and it takes you into this place to go and write music, you know? With that one, with that one, um, I want it to feel epic and unsentimental. Wait, do you want to hear just a little intro of it? Yes, yes. Let yes. me see. You tell me. All right. Let me just see. Hold okay. on. I have to turn off the fan. Yeah. That's Brianna. Say his name. All right. Yeah. So this is how the song starts, but it's orchestrated already. But this is the little intro to the song. All right. Okay. Ready? Now, how do... Uh, can you hear this? I can hear it. All right, this is the intro. So that's just the way it starts. But that's the I way mean, you said it. The way you the way you finished the poem, and then you went right into that space. You know what I mean? Like it was. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be reflective. It can't be sentimental. It has to be like a story, like a ballad, mm -hmm. like a, an old story that's being told. Because it's not about pitying Jerry Hammer. It's about pitying the world that allowed that to happen. Mm. And can we talk about the world? Like, are we going to be able to really talk about the world after yes. this, this, this is over? You know, tell the real stories. Tell the... Mm. I hope so. I mean, Justin and I were talking about this yesterday because, and I don't know if TC was there, I missed one of the... Oh, Jill Grove, yes, uh, Asher really? Lindsay. I know all these people. Yes, anyway, so what... Um, right... Uh, like when Intimate Apparel was postponed, like mm -hmm. every week or every few weeks, everybody meets on Zoom to talk. And I missed the Zoom that happened right after George Floyd. People mm -hmm. said it was unbelievable. And there was a lot of crying and people went crazy. Mm -hmm. And Justin told me that he told, that they everyone told stories about things that had, had happened to them being black in the world, black in America, mm 
Mm -hmm. um, but he said a lot of them aren't even the kind of stories that are bad, like where somebody you know called you a horrible name or something. Right. But they are. It's a way that someone treats you that makes you feel icky inside. Absolutely. And I was like, those. That's all the stuff I want to know because it's like. You know, they say in AA, I don't want to be part of the problem. I want to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And music is definitely a solution. Poetry is a solution. Art is a solution. But I want to be in the whole thing. I want to be a part of this uh, you know, sea change. Yeah. And Jerry Hammer, like, just, just, just bring to life this kid who literally disappeared in Island Park. Like, I mean, I wonder if Peter Ransman remembers him. It, it just is so tragic. So yes. anyway, I feel I'm, that's where I am right now. I'm writing a lot of poetry. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm writing a lot of words because yeah. that's where I am at the moment. I'm more in words than notes, although yeah. I wish I I really like the new song, Jerry Hammer. Someday, some one of these days you'll hear the music. On yes. part two, Karen, Ricky Ian Gordon, part two, because we couldn't get it all in. Listen, we're going to do, a, we're gonna do a, a concert. We're definitely going to do a concert this summer, you and I, online. It'll be okay. a special show, Kiki Conversations. And we're going to just do it, man. We're going to share with people. We're just going to share because, man, the world needs sharing. And I haven't done a lot of singing online. I, I really have not. I mean, literally for the first month and a half right but before i was started doing this show i couldn't even sing i could not sing there was not there was no opera aria no anything i wanted to sing but i would sing spirituals occasionally oh, yeah. spiritual you know here and there but i just couldn't sing and then i just started talking and then mr floyd was murder and that's when i wanted to to sing it was very it's very interesting i never had that before because i've always sung my you know my whole life i wanted to be an opera singer since i was 16 so i always was in this classical realm but for the first time when it was taken away from me in this way so suddenly and just i just didn't want to sing and i think a lot of art, a lot of singers said that that they just yeah. do it but you know what? You have to trust that something is growing inside of you that's going to make your singing ten times more beautiful. Oh. I mean, I, I'm just sorry that that is that's what oh, Jill Grove says. I still haven't sung. Mm -hmm. No, seriously, I think something is growing inside of all of us that's going to make us feel and be more connected. Oh, Talise! Talise! Oh, God! Hi, Talise! These are like the best people. I do. I only roll with good people, Ricky. And you roll with the good ones, Meredith. <laughs> oh my God, Meredith. Yeah, we went to school together. We went to Curtis together, Meredith and I. Oh really? Yeah. I know her from uh, from Opera Theater St. Louis. Yes. So Andy. Yep. Uh, anyway, mm -hmm. so yes, I think I think Karen. A lot of people couldn't sing, and mm. that that just you have to trust what's being born in you during this time. Mm. Yeah. No time is like this. No time is like Andre Bishop called me. He's been running Lincoln Center for the last 30 years. He said, I've never been through anything like this in my life. Right. So, you know, and, and guess what? And Andrew Duxbury, it's really nice to see these people. I love you all. So mm -hmm. listen, that's the thing is none of us know mm -hmm. what's going to be. But let's make sure it's beautiful at the end. Make sure it's beautiful in the end and that we just continue to tell the stories. Just just to tell the stories, you know, and to be honest. Like I, you know, I was asking um Kamala Sankaram, I was like, you know, what, what does art mean to you? Like, what is artistry? Like, what is being a great artist mean? You know, and she said humanity, like having humanity. And I was like, okay, if we thought about that when we made music, it would color even the music making differently, instead of thinking about the notes and getting the technique right and, you know, just. Can we, well, like, you know what? Um, like they say in AA, and this is what I think, um, everything is service. Yes. If you think of everything as service, mm. that is the right head to be in. I've even been told, look at that, Deanna, I love you too. He, let me tell you something. So you're about to be go on stage in an opera, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed if you decide right before you're about to perform in your mind, you dedicate it to someone. And in that way, then you give it away. And I think that that is 
That is what this is all about. That's why, Karen, I'm so glad we're speaking because I could read you those poems and I feel so open and I feel like all these people love me and I love them. And I can say, this is my conflict. This is where I'm in pain. This is what I want to talk about right now. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And I just, I feel, I feel cleansed by this. This is right. This is what we do on here. We share. Oh, kinky. Okay. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's, I, I love this. This vein, I, it, it actually, it's my, it's my singing in, a, in another way. It's another way I get to express myself. It's another way I get to share with, with people and connect with them. And it's, it's beautiful. And you can come on here and you can just read poems. <laughs> you can play music. You can talk, you know. All I love it. Music. Stephanie said, um, she loves when I say poems. Do you want me to actually say a poem? Like Keep what, going. Like poem? Yes, yes. You want me to say one of my favorite poems? Go for it. All right. Um, and then we have to get Kevin to say hello. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is one of my favorite poems in the whole world ever written, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's a poem by a woman named Marie Howe who wrote a book called What the Living Do after her brother Johnny died of AIDS mm -hmm. and it took her eight years to write this book. And when this book came out, there was a, um, a review in the Boston Globe that said, there aren't words for a book this beautiful. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. So can I just say this poem to you? All right. What the living do. Johnny, the kitchen sink has been clogged for days. Some utensil probably fell down there. And the Drano won't work, but smells dangerous. And the crusty dishes have piled up, waiting for the plumber I still haven't called. This is the every day we spoke of. It's winter again, the sky's a deep headstrong blue, and the sunlight pours through the open living room window because the heat's on too high in here and I can't turn it off. For weeks now, Driving or dropping a bag of groceries in the street, the bag breaking, I've been thinking, this is what the living do. And yesterday, hurrying along those wobbly bricks in the Cambridge sidewalk, spilling my coffee down my wrist and sleeve, I thought it again, and again later while buying a hairbrush. This is it, parking slamming the car door shut in the cold. What you called that yearning, what you finally gave up. We want the spring to come and the winter to pass. We want whoever to call or not call, a letter, a kiss. We want more and more and then more of it. But there are moments walking when I catch a glimpse of myself in the window glass, say the window of the corner video store, and I'm gripped with a cherishing so deep for my own glowing hair, chapped face, and unbuttoned coat that I'm speechless. I am living. I remember you. Hmm. It's a good poem, right? That is a beautiful poem. I am I, living. I remember I, you. I am living. I am living. Yes. You forget that. You forget. You. It's like that big sigh when you've been grieving for so long, and it find your. You know, everything bursts open, right? That's what it feels oh like. That's exactly right. That is a per beautiful, like that big sigh. The big sigh. I am living. And, mm. and it's and the sigh is everything, right? Breath is life. Breath is life. Breath is life. It's like the gas in your car, as I say. If you don't have gas, you're not going anywhere. It's that gas. So can I just say this? Just one thing. This, like, I know I keep repeating myself, but just to say this because we're all artists here, right? Yes. Yes. So. Based on what you just said, Karen, that one big sigh, we have to breathe this time in. Mm. Everything that's happening, the hatred, 
the idiocy, the lies, the sickness, the violence, we have to breathe it in. We have to let it be, and then we have to make something out of it. Mm. So that's the sigh. Mm. I think so. Mm. It's so scary, though, Ricky. It's scary for a lot of people. Life's scary, honey. Getting up in the morning is scary. <laughs> it's true. With <laughs> you always have to remind yourself. Yeah, it is scary. Yeah. You know, I they say in AA, if you're afraid to fly, fly scared. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's even like sometimes I'll sit in the house and it'll be like three days or four days. You know, I've been in the house and I'm and then I go, I get nervous to go out to go out, you know, and it's like Karen. You gotta get out and breathe. You know, you gotta get out and feel the sunshine and feel the air on your skin and like all these things. But we're also like, you can get, you can really get messed up and. You oh, know? you can get insular. insular. You can't let yourself get insular. Oh, you it's gotta. Not, push. You know what they? Another thing they say in AA: the most dangerous neighborhood to go to alone mm -hmm. is your own head. Is your own head? That's <laughs> true. Oh, the conversations are going in there, honey. <laughs> hey, you guys have to look. Do you see that dresser where it's three colors of blue? That was, it's right. That's one of my things that I did during the pandemic. I painted all my furniture three colors of blue. It's sort of gorgeous. Yes. It, but I, it, I, it was hard. Yeah. Well, you're a composer. <laughs> Not a painter. You guys have questions. Everyone is so like, they're so into it. I love it. Oh, people have questions? Dude, I don't know. They're just- Ken, Ken, Ken it's just preach, Ricky. I love you. All right. I, I'm, I'll answer any questions. Kevin, do you want to just meet everybody? Come say hi, Kevin. He's probably like, hell no. <laughs> I think he went upstairs. I think okay. he might have just bought the grocery, went upstairs. If he comes down, I'll make him come say hello. Yes, Adam. But, all right. Thank goodness this conversation is being recorded. Oh, yes. we Everyone knows we put it on YouTube, but we keep them on, on uh, the page for a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I what's that? Do they have questions? I don't know. Come on, you guys. You got questions? I'm looking to see. How, how do you get rights, Damien Jeter? How do you the get poems? Rights? I think Damien, so. you got a right to um if you if you like a poem, you have to um look in the you get in touch with the public publishing company and you have to ask for their permissions department. And then they put you through a whole rigmarole. There are forms. There are things you have to do to get rights. Sometimes you have to pay for them. But that's you have to go through the permissions department. Oh, Kirsten says, where's Lucy? Lucy? Lucy, come here, baby. You want to hear Lucy sing? Please. Come on, good Lucy. Make your debut on Convos. Let me get her. Wait. Lucy, wait. Lucy, this this is so amazing, you guys. This is crazy, right? <laughs> Legends. Let me say hello. All right, wait. Hi, Lucy. Wait. Lucy, let's sing now. Wait, Lucy. She sounds better than some people I know. <laughs> She's a spinto. She's spinto. Right, Lucy? You ain't no Aren't metal. They Aren't they all? <laughs> Here she is. <laughs> yes. What kind of dog is she? Mutt. Mutt. They're the best. I'm a cat Wow, Chihuahua lady. blend. What are you? I'm a cat lady, so. You're a cat lady? I wish I was. I'm allergic. Oh. Oh, well. That's Lucy's okay. my pal. Yeah, you guys have questions? Sing Lucy. Everyone's like, sing Lucy. Lucy made her debut. Yeah, uh, they all know it. Oh, do you compose with a singer in mind? That's for my friend Brad, who's in a fantastic baritone. Um, very often. Um, and even if they're not going to be the one singing it, like, for example, when I did, like, like Grapes of Wrath, I knew um, Ma Jode, um in my mind, it was Lorraine Hunt's voice. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when I was writing um, Intimate Apparel, of course, I was thinking about Lane T. Price. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I have a million voices in my head, and I think about where those voices go, and that's what 
you know, I'm a geek. I've been listening to opera my whole life. I know 10 million singers. So, Wow. wow. Who are some of your favorite non-opera singers? Nana. Well, like I love Sarah Vaughan. Yeah. I think she's one of the greatest singers ever. Oh. You know, it's one of the greatest recordings and nobody knows it. There was a recording of um, South Pacific. You have to listen to Sarah Vaughan singing Happy Talk. And Jonathan Tunick orchestrated it for like 10 billion pieces. It is the most joyous recording of that song. You cannot stay sad when you're hearing that. I love I love all those singers. I like Dinah Washington. You know, I loved Joni Mitchell. I mean, when I was growing up, I like I loved Neil Young. There's too many. I, I love everybody. You know what I mean? I, I, I had very eclectic. That's Eight. beautiful. You should run a company. Hello. Um, that's another story. <laughs> that's another story. We'll see who's going to be running those stories, those companies after this all. Listen. I hope history. some of them change. Hey, 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 man, I'm 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 you know what? Can I say one thing? Go you ahead. Know there is, there's meanness in the opera world, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. That's going away because I'm sorry. Nobody is allowed to tolerate that anymore. No more. It's over. It's done. And I don't even want to say names, but there's a regime of this, like the old regime. And some of them are very cranky and stupid. And it's like, bye bye, because okay. that's enough now. Go away. Oh, peace out. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Please. So we now bye -bye. We can make the arts. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, my God. I just want to listen to you read poems. I have this whole thing of questions. I'm like, like, what? I don't even need those things. Oh, that is hilarious. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, with me, you press the button and I just go. I yeah, should. I love it. Listen, it's the best interview ever. Come on now. Oh, I'm, no, I'm so glad. It's, it's you, too, Karen. I don't know what it is. I just felt really... I guess in a way I needed to speak. I needed to talk. I've been alone. I mean, Kevin and I have been, we haven't seen anyone since March 12th. All right. Wow. Like he's, and he's upstairs working. I'm downstairs working. I am ready to like get some things out. Exactly. You know, I, I even called my therapist today. I was like, <laughs> it's time. Because as a composer, it's very lonely. People don't understand that part. You spend more time by yourself than you do actually for with the people that you compose the music for and it's not just being alone it's all that self-recrimination that you have to plow through every day like every note you write is like you know there's a voice in your head going it's not beethoven uh, it's not like that's not that's not you know benjamin Britten. there's like the little voice that says everything you do is awful so you know i always it's not for the faint of heart i'm sorry there, guys. i don't want your job i don't want your job <laughs> <laughs> now, don't come back as a composer. But I'm there not. is one great thing. Writing is a pain in the ass, but having written is great. Yeah, I always like it when I'm done with it. I like my music. Like at the end, I'm like, mm -hmm. it was hard enough to do, baby. I like it now. See, that's beautiful. We don't hear people talking more about that. Oh, I, I love my music. Ned Roram said something really smart. And I think it was, he said, People, composers write the music they want to hear. Mm -hmm. I have to say that's true, mm -hmm. you know, because even if you're taking a little bit of what everybody does, like, like there's a little bit of stealing and everything, you don't know you're doing it, but but you are ultimately turning it into what you want to hear. What mm -hmm. I'm always, I walk around this lake a lot of times listening to my own music, not because mm -hmm. I'm conceited, because I don't even think it's me. You know, I think we co-create, you know what I mean? Yes. We are channels. We get out of the way and we let something come through us. Mm. But mm. I think that um, I think my music expresses my experience of being in the world, and yes. that makes me happy. Yes. And I I want to give that to you. You know. Mm -hmm. Because it, I, you can feel it. I I I am someone who's very sensitive to those things. And, you know, I, I started singing very, very early and I always had all this potential. And I feel like now that I'm on the other side of the potential, I know how to look at a piece of music and be able to interpret it, to be able to sing it, to be the vessel for it, you know, differently. But I can tell when someone 
has written something that they like or that they love or that they don't like. You know, I don't know where that comes from, but um, or if I can look at a piece of music and know exactly how I want to sing it, you know, and how I how like the map, you know. Yes. The clear map is like, okay, okay. I, I, you know, and there is freedom in that and maturity as an artist, you know, oftentimes the, the business just doesn't allow even people to get to that point because they shoot you down, you know, or you, you get knocked out or, you know, you get pushed back, you get held back so that they can push other people forward and people never get to come into their full realization as an artist, you know, and it's, I think that's where the bitterness and the disappointment comes from not just getting the opportunities, but, but, for, but not being able to fulfill. I know. Potential. I know when that's, let's change that. Let's use yes. this time to rewrite it. Yeah. And I have to say something to you, Karen, I really need to thank you about something because when you posted my people and then made that little movie of those people's mm -hmm. faces, it made me feel useful in the deepest way. Like, it made me feel a part of something in a way I can't quite explain. I like Kevin and I were watching a movie and he had to go pee and I just happened to check my Facebook page and there was that posting and I was, it put me in another world. Like I can't believe she used my song and Langston's poetry and she sang this and posted those faces. It just like, you know, if you can feel Everybody wants to feel useful. Mm. At the end of the day, just use me, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah. So thank you for that. Thank You're very welcome. And thank <laughs> you for your music. Thank you. I, yeah. I mean, what can I say to that? I need to drink to that. <laughs> you need to drink. I, I'll take <laughs> Mm. I have to make dinner. All I made is okay. my chicken. All right. So make, make, let me just, Kevin, are you in the kitchen? I'm going to let you go. Anything else you want to leave us with? Because we're going to come back and do this again in a month or, in a month or so. Because, But we're going to do like a, a mini concert, you and I. All right. Should, well, should we end with like a little Langston Hughes poem? Please go for it. Everybody knows it, but it's one of the most beautiful poems of all time. Go for Whitney. it. Whitney. Mm. Gather up in the arms of your pity, the sick, the depraved, the desperate, the tired, all the scum of this weary city, gather up in the arms of your pity, gather up in the arms of your love, those who expect no love from above. Mm. Thank you. Thank Gather you, up. and thanks everybody for showing up. You are like, it's Amazing. Like a thousand angels. Amazing. Really, really. Thank yes. you. You we're gonna do this again. All right. All right. I'll talk to you soon. All right. How do I get out of here? I'll just I'm gonna shut it down, baby. I'm gonna All right. shut it down. Bye everybody. <laughs> Bye everybody. Bye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>